What is steel compared to the hand that wields it? Dulce Doom from Super 7 is in the Dorkland! What is up, denizens? We are taking a look today at the Dulce Doom figure from Super 7. This is a small wave. This only came with two figures, so we have the Thulsa Doom here, and I'm still waiting for Conan with the war paint to come in. Um, this figure is wild. Like I, I'm really impressed with everything it comes with. Like The stuff that's packed into this box, there is a ton of value here. Lots of cloth goods, all of which are removable, and I will get to that uh, later in the video. But overall, I mean, aside from the fact that you know, we're still on this old Masters of the Universe Classics buck, and it can very much feel dated at times. This figure is a knockout. This is, uh, I don't have a ton of Super 7 figures, mostly just the Conan stuff. I got a couple He-Man figures, but other than that, I haven't been collecting the Turtles or the Thundercats. I just, I, I haven't really dug into all of those lines because I collect too many other things. So this is kind of like my focus really is the Conan stuff. Um, it's actually been a long time since I've watched the movie, and um, I used to watch it all the time as a kid, but wow, it has been a while since I've actually like sat down and watched it in full. In getting these figures in hand, I, I really want to sit down and, and revisit that movie. And I don't remember if they ever showed <laughs> pics in the promo photos of this snake head with the mouth open, but it is a riot. I am so <laughs> happy that they made a moving mouth on this. It's amazing. So anyway, let's get into this review. Okay, getting into the details of the figure. Here's a look at the James Earl Jones head sculpt. Since Super 7 is not terribly strong when it comes to the likenesses. In fact, oftentimes they are pretty weak. But this one's not bad. I'd say this is one of their better likenesses. Still not great. It's not like Hot Toys level or something like that. But it looks pretty good. It might be a little light, but it, I'm not sure if that's only because I'm looking at the previous version, which is much darker. So we have this armored version of Thulsa Doom from a previous wave, and his skin's really dark. And if you notice, his eyes are blue here. One nice little touch is they gave him the like gold eyes that he has as he's transforming into the serpent. So that was a nice touch too. But I definitely like this current head sculpt better. I think maybe I wish it was somewhere in between in terms of in terms of uh, tones, in terms of darkness. Like this feels too light and this one maybe feels a little too dark, perhaps. Although under the lights, this one looks pretty good color wise. So uh, it's hard to say, but next to each other, there's definitely a difference and it would be nice if they matched. There's some nice ornate details in the headdress piece. And I, like I said before, I haven't really watched this movie in a long time. So I don't know you know, I can't really sit here and speak to the movie accuracy and what things are wrong and, you know, which little design in the headdress is off or what pattern in the, in the cloth is wrong or whatever. But for the most part, I tend to judge the figures as the figures and I don't get too hung up on, on the movie accuracy. But I like this and it reminds me very much of that scene in the movie. So it looks pretty good. And so let me just kind of walk through the cloth goods. So you have this uh, over the top piece here that has a snap button in the bottom back here and we're going to take that off later. For the back, the cloth that drapes down here is also a fabric mesh type material that is attached to this piece that removes. And I kind of think I like it even though it might not look as fancy as something that would have been made out of plastic. Just for like moving the figure around and balancing and standing it up, it's nice not to have this giant heavy thing hanging off the back. And for lighting, it's kind of neat because you can shine the light through. So for photography, I actually think I might prefer this piece here. The belt is a separate piece that's a rubber material. And then you have the cloth robe that actually removes via Velcro. And underneath you can see it's like a synthetic type of material. He comes with fists and then he's got a whole bunch of other hands, which is nice because a lot of these figures don't come with a lot of hands. And there's some paintwork going on under the robes too. So. Um, you know, there's some nice details there as well, including the this uh, skirt piece here. And then you've got the, I believe these are the same legs. Yeah, they're just painted differently. They're the same legs as the previous figure. I do have a little paint slop right over here, but those are typically covered by the robe. And then you have his feet with sandals, bare feet with sandals. So this is a pretty cool looking figure. And 
I feel like the value, you know, a lot of times people complain about how expensive these Super 7 Ultimates figures are getting, but this one of all of them feels like there's just a lot in the box. There's a lot of value going on here. A lot of great details and textures and different materials and pieces and stuff and some nice accessories too. Alrighty, before I start picking him apart and removing items and all this stuff, let's take a look at how he scales. He's measuring in right at seven inches and let's take a look at him next to a few other figures. First of all, here he is next to himself, Thelsa Doom, the armored version on the left and on the right is the power pose version of Conan. Next, a couple other Super 7 figures on the left is the Pit Fighter Conan with the other head from the power pose figure and then we have Skeletor from the Masters of the Universe movie. And now so we can see how Thulsa Doom scales next to some other fantasy lines. On the left we have the Storm Collectibles Axe Battler from the Golden Axe line and on the right is the gold skeleton from the Golden Axe line. Here are a couple Mythic Legions figures. On the left, Sir Gerard with cloth, cape, and tabard from Harker Customs. And on the right is Deltagar the Destroyer. And last but not least, a couple Mezco figures. We have Nosferatu on the left and the Frazetta Conan on the right. And lately, I haven't been doing the packaging every time in the videos, but I had to pull out the box for this. These boxes are gorgeous. I love what they're doing with their packaging. It might be over packaged, quite frankly, <laughs> but I appreciate it. And if you're an inbox collector, this is a great line for you. So let's take a look at this thing. Over here, we have the um, textured like snakeskin slip cover over the top. On the back, we got this gorgeous um, shiny piece over here. On the top, there's the Ultimates logo and a nice shiny application there. And then you have the Demigod Serpent Thulsa Doom listed on the front. So there's the slip cover. And then you slide this up. And of course, I don't have the figure in there anymore, but pull that up and you've got the Conan logo. You've got a nice um, sort of fiery background. And then you've got a bio of the character over here. For accessories, he comes with the alternate head sculpt. And like I said before, that jaw opens up. Very cool stuff. Looks great on the figure. And he's got this like decorative one. It's not a head sculpt. It just kind of like sits as if it's crawling out of the, the loose clothing there. And then he's got the bow and arrow set. So what we have is the snake that he shoots as an arrow and the, uh, and the bow. He's also got the serpent dagger, which I think is like a lot better than the previous release. The blade that came with the armored one is like just unpainted gray that's pretty translucent but this one's got a nice shiny metallic color to it and then you get the painted handle so that's a nice little item right there and he comes with four sets of hands which to me is a lot compared to the previous releases of these Conan Ultimates figures he's got these um, flat hands that are you know you can have it be like almost like worshiping hands or it's probably meant to be where he starts transforming and the, the hands like creep back into the clothes. Another cool thing is that the gripping hands he comes with, there's two sets so you can have the vertical or the horizontal hinges on those gripping hands. And of course he has the fists as well. Next up the articulation I'll do with all of the clothing and gear on so that you can kind of see how he moves as is and then I'll take all the gear off just so you can see the process. Okay first up for the articulation the head can kind of come forward a little bit and can really not look up very much. The neck peg I actually is one of my biggest gripes on these figures. Um, let me actually just pop this off and show you. Yeah, I actually can't stand these neck pegs. They, I feel like they don't really move. Like they move a little bit, but you know, there's not a lot of action. There's enough parts where it seems like it should be a lot of great motion, but um, there's just not much going on there. You got the hinge arms that can swing up just about to a T. You can twist at the top of the bicep. You get that really just outdated single jointed elbow that just gets almost no range. Then you have the wrist articulation depending on which hands you have on him. It's horizontal or if you have the one pair of gripping hands you can get that vertical hinge. Classics crunch over here. It's just a hinge at the torso and there's a twist at the waist. Leg can kick forward out that far at the hip and then back twist way up high on the thigh there. He can go out into the splits single jointed knee right here and then he's got that angled rocker that kind of directs the foot out this way as you articulate it. So yeah I mean the weakest part of these figures is the articulation. These old um, old style Masters of the Universe classics 
bucks are just a little bit outdated, actually a lot outdated. Okay, so now I'm gonna attempt on camera to remove all the clothing so that you can see um, the process and, and how it feels and how it works. It's actually all meant to be removed, so there's no modifications, you can just easily remove it. Here we go. Head's really tight on this thing. And then what you have in the back, there is a snap right here that pops easily off. And then this comes over the top of the head. And this is actually just twisted and you can slide it right through. And there you have this piece right here that you could try this on another figure. Looks kind of neat on the ax battler, but it doesn't quite reach in the back. So it's not gonna fit him. And then here's how it looks on the Conan body. The belt has just a peg and after my first time removing it, it definitely like sits kind of high now. I feel like it was almost not glued, but just like all kind of stuck together. But you know, it does peg back in. And then this piece is actually pretty rubbery and soft. So it's not too bad getting the piece back in there. Just kind of have to stretch it and twist it and then you're back in. So not too bad on the belt reassembly. And then for the priest robes, it's very simple. Just a Velcro piece across the chest. I like to hold the Velcro. It's really strong and I don't want to have it pull away from the actual um, robe itself. And this is the one probably tricky part. The elbows on the figure have a protrusion right here part of the sculpt work in the decoration of the of the arm, the lower arm. And so when you're pulling this off, when you get to this point, you wanna be careful that you don't pull and snag at, at that point. So for me to, to get it off, pin the arms back, which is pretty typical for taking clothing off a figure. And then as I'm pulling this off, I find that piece and sort of lift and just kind of start working it back. This material is very stretchy, so you can kind of just stretch it up a little bit and then bring it back. And you don't even have to remove the hands, it just comes right off like that. And then I'm gonna do the same thing on this side, just sort of like stretch it and lift and shimmy it down so that I'm not allowing it to get caught up on that piece. And then it comes right off. Thulsa Doom's body, which if you are into the Masters of the Universe Classics buck, it's actually a pretty cool looking body. And this piece, I haven't, I don't know how to remove the upper torso. Like, I don't know how to disassemble it at the waist, like how easy that is, because that's what you would need to do. It's actually, I think it's a piece that kind of is in between the the upper body and the and the waist there. So probably removable if you disassemble it. If anybody's ever done that disassembly, let me know in the comments how easy or difficult it is. But yeah, so you can get, get a look at the body overall. Um, with this figure. And then one more swapped out look with that serpent head and the tunic type uh, piece with the cape on there without the priest's robes. Anyway, that's my video for today. If you like this stuff, please check out this playlist right here. And until next time, may the force be with you.